Okay, hey folks, Mark Locklear here. Um, do a little screencast for Chapter 4. I think what we'll do is uh, work through a couple of issues in um, Exercise 4.2. So this is Exercise 4.2 on page 143, Enhance uh, the Invoice Application. So just some general comments on Chapter 4. Uh, chapter 4 is how to control, how to code control statements. So most of that should be pretty straightforward with regard to loops. Um, um, if and if else statements. So if you have specific questions on things, just um, yeah, just let me know and I'll answer those. I think what we're going to look at in 4.2 is uh, we'll do number two. Uh, we'll do one of the things that I ask you to do in number two, and uh, then we'll also look at uh, adding the static method. And that's kind of a big deal. Uh, they only cover that. They cover that right at the end of chapter four. And so this idea of creating our own methods is going to start to introduce us to the concept of sort of abstracting our, our code and start to modularize our code. So this is important when we begin to think about object-oriented programming. Uh, this will be important when we start to talk about cl classes is just sort of going to take this idea of a static method and take it to the next level of abstracting or mo or mod modularizing our code. So first let's look at um, let's look at uh, exercise 4.2. We'll look at number two. So I'm just going to read through uh, number two under exercise 4.2 here. It says change the if else statement so customers of type R with a subtotal uh, with uh, customers of type R with a subtotal that is greater than or equal to 250 but less than 500 get a 25% discount and then those with a subtotal of 500 or more get a 30% discount. I think we'll just do that that one just to um, just to use that as an example. So if we look at our code here. The first thing I'm going to do, just again, is a sanity check, is just run this and make sure it works. And I should, it should compile, and then of course I should be able to enter, uh, I can enter R here, and then again, kind of based on our code, if I enter, um, let's do something greater than 250, it's going to be 20 per percent. So then if I enter 300, let's say, then you notice here I get a discount percent of 20%. I can go ahead and exit that. So let's uh, let's just do this first part. So we need to add. Essentially, we're going to add an, another um, another else if statement here, so that if the user enters a subtotal greater than 500, they'll get a 30% discount. And then we're going to modify uh, mo modify the else if statement for the 250. So there's a couple different ways we could do this. Um, I think what I'm going to do is copy and paste, copy and paste this, and then I'm going to come down here, paste that in, and then I'm going to move also copy and paste this in so you can see a lot of what I'm doing here I, I again I'm a fan of um, I'm a fan of the copy and paste because it, it often can um, can avoid syntax errors in in your code and so now really I've sort of got the structure for this new feature that we're going to add and so let me go back and read here so First off, it's, if it's over 500, we want a 30% discount. So I'm just going to go in here and change this to 500. And then I can easily change this to 0.3, which is going to be 30%. And then it also asks us to modify the range. So the first part of that was if the customer type is R and the subtotal is greater than or equal to 250, but less than 500. So yeah, then we just go in here and add 250 and then change this to 500. and that should be it for that feature and so now we'll test this out so again the first thing I'm looking for is that I don't see any I don't see any any errors over on the, the right here for instance you know if I had spelled subtotal wrong you know I would see something like this and there's no reason to try and run this right if I try try and compile and run it, I'm gonna obviously get, get an, 
get in there. And I, I see students. That's one of the things I see new new programmers do is you know there's obviously errors. You should fix those before you try and run them. And in fact, it's going to probably only um, you know only cause you more problems if you try and um, try and run code that's not not error free. So yeah, I don't have any errors here, so I'm going to run this, and now I want to test out specifically. I really need to test both these cases, right? I need to enter a number that's between 250 and 500 to make sure I get uh, 1%. In fact, that that's not right, right? It's actually that should be 25%, and that that's a good example of um, when you're cutting and pasting code. Be sure you change all the variables and all the the values to anything new that, that you need to add so in fact so this, this is going to be wrong right if I run this now I get the old 10 percent so but I, I already made the change to 25 so let's run this again so I'm going to test the number between 250 and 500 so let's say 400 I just did did, did that wrong so let's so we'll do yes and now let's do R and let's do 400. Okay, and you see I get 25% there, which is what I what I should get. And now let's test a number over. Let's test a number over 500. So let's just do 578, and we should get 30%. So that's correct. Also, when you're doing this test, it's good. It's a good idea to test on uh, both ends of the ranges, on either end of of either range. So lots of times when you're doing testing you need to specifically put in since the range is 500 to 250 you really need to t you really need to test 250 250 and 251 on the low end on the high end you should really test 499 500 and 5001 and test all those scenarios to make sure they're correct okay so now let's look at this idea of a static method um, you've, you've got a few other things to do in this exercise but that's uh, that's the only one I'm, I'm going to show you so now let's uh, test this idea of a static method um, so essentially what we're going to do here let, let, let me just read through number five so number five says code a static method named get discount percent that has two parameters customer type and subtotal uh, it says to do that efficiently you can move the appropriate code from the main method of the application into the static method and make the required modifications so what main code is it referring to well first off if we look at what it's asking us to do anything that's dealing with the the discount percent or getting the discount percent we should move it inside this method so really it's all of this code here really starting with uh, so at the beginning we get that we're getting the user input um, we're getting the user input in, inside these um, these lines of code, and then once we get that, then we start to calculate the discount percent. So really, what we're talking about is all this. Let me make this full screen. So really, all of this code, starting from here down through the discount percent amount here, we're going to move that into a separate method. So rather than me do rather than me do this online, I'm going to go offline for for a second and pop some code in, and then. I'll come back and we'll continue. Okay, so now I've got uh, got some code here where I've moved things around. Let's review what I've done. So now, if we look inside our main method, we can see that all of this logic related to discount percent has been moved down here. Notice where I moved it to. It really goes in this next to last bracket. And just make sure you're aware in general that can be a challenge for students doing this, even a challenge for, for me. Anytime you're kind of modifying programs or cutting and pasting, you have to pay special attention to where these brackets are and these block statements because um, the, the, the programs rely heavily on, on, on that with regard to being able to, to compile and run. But um, so notice I've what I've done is created this get discount percent method here private uh, so it's a it's private static double uh, the the private means that it's only accessible to um, to this class that we're in it that that may not make a whole lot of sense now once we get into class level methods and variables it will make more sense uh, double is the return type we have to specify the return type in the, the method get discount percent is the name 
of the method and then uh, these are inside the parentheses or any arguments we're going to pass to that method and then in this case it's going to be customer type and subtotal. Now let's look back up in our main program where we called this. So again all of this should look just as it did be before through this uh, getting the customer type and then getting the subtotal from the user. And then notice well, what we do with this line, this uh, discount percent, we're creating this discount percent variable. And now here's where we call this get discount percent um, method. And then we pass in this customer type and this subtotal. And notice as I click on it, it highlights it here. Uh, customer type, I'm getting that from, from the user here. Subtotal, I'm getting that from the user here. And then if you think of it from a code path, perspective as I as I hit this as I hit this get discount percent method now we move down here and then again we we specify the arguments that are passed to this discount percent method and then really all of this code is the same as it was in our main method save for this return discount uh, at, at the very end that that's the variable we're returning and then again if we think of it in terms of the code path for from here when we say return dis discount percent think of it in, in in terms of this method is returning this variable this discount percent variable back so it's returning it back and then it's being assigned to the discount percent variable in the main method and then all of our math is the same and really everything else is the same from this point on and uh, so once I've coded this up again, I shouldn't see any uh, I shouldn't see any errors over to the side. Notice I've got the little light bulb here, and some of these you can ignore. In this case, uh, in this case, we can kind of ignore this. It's just a, a warning. It's not it's not an error. So now I'm going to run this code, just sort of sanity check it. So again, if I enter R and remember that our code we did earlier, we said anything over 500 should be 30 percent and I see that 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 works well and again in a, in a real world scenario you do you anytime you make a change like this it's just good to kind of test all code paths so you would also test a, a a customer of type C and then I think the assignment asks you to add a a customer type of T so that's just a little about that um, again think of a, these static methods in terms of Think of these static methods of terms as a way to modularize code. And, you know, again, for what we're doing here, it's not as big a deal because it's a single method. But, again, as we get farther into the class, we're going to have, you know, three, four, five, maybe as many as ten methods um, that we'll be calling on. And so this is really a good way to, again, um, mod modularize code and put it in kind of nice, neat chunks. So we can specify certain methods to do certain things. Okay, so that, that's all I've got for this screencast. Uh, if, if you have questions, just shoot me an email. Thanks.